train shader is a vast topic and usually it need more attention compared to other shader like shader for a wall or a rock. The main reason for that is that the train, especially train in open world games are huge and we cannot create a texture for the entire train. It is impossible to do that. So what we can do normally is to choose a couple of textures and repeat them in terrain. But how to mix this texture is also important. Many use a splat map to tell each texture where should be painted. So a splat map is another huge texture on top of the train and this texture normally has red, green and blue channel. You put a texture as a background texture then you mix the background texture with uh, another texture based on the red value of the splat map. Then you repeat this process for green and blue channel of the splat map. So you can put multiple texture on the train in different position of the train. I will explain about the splat map in another video. But what you can see here is a kind of splat map which is generated by shader code. You can see as I sculpt. The texture on the train is changing and it's adopting itself. So there are many ways to put texture on different parts of the train. But let me tell you my preferred way. Many people think that they can paint the entire train. I believe this is not possible if train is big. And if you do that, at last it even not look good. So I believe that we cannot create a good mixture of the textures with painting. I will use texture painting for something special, something like pothole or something unnatural. But generally, I think we cannot create everything with texture painting. I like to automate the texturing of my train. This is much easier and also look much better. For example, for this train, I use train normal to create a splat map texture and also I use a wetness map or water flow map that is generated by word machine. And look at this water flow map. It is impossible that I can paint this. I hope someday we can generate a flow map with our M train plugin. It is possible to do that also. There is another big issue with using the same texture and repeating them. You can see that here. It is obvious that we used the same texture. There are many ways to correct this issue and each one of them has its own pros and cons. For example, one way to correct this is to rotate each texture in each section of our train. And let me tell you this. There are many game engine and many plugin which they automatically apply a non-repeating algorithm in the shader code. It means you create a train, you put a texture on that and it's look good. But I won't apply a default non-repeating shader in my plugin. I have various reasons for that. One reason is you should learn how to write shader for train. And if you write your shader by yourself, you can modify that based on your need. Another reason is that there are various shader algorithm for non-repeating pattern and depend on your train you should apply one of them or multiple of them and sometimes your train contain many grass rock and many other object on that and in that case you don't even need a non-repeating shader and why we should waste GPU computational power to calculate what we don't need and I really suggest if you can avoid using non-repeating shader code, so avoid that. This operation is really computational expensive. Another reason is that each train is different. We make a different shader code for desert terrain. Also, we make a different shader code for a mountainous terrain. For example, look at this. As you can see, I use a rock texture for this part of the train, which has a steep slope. As you can see, the rock texture is stretched. I can fix this by using a triplanar texturing. Triplanar texturing help a lot to fix a stretched texture like this rock. But it is computational expensive. Now, if I have a desert terrain, I don't have a steep slope and I don't need to apply a triplanar texturing. And I can avoid this computational heavy stuff. 
So as this train shader is a very vast topic, this is an introduction video for other video which come in this video series. I try to update this video series and discuss about various methods for creating a good looking train. Up to this point, I concentrate on the train mesh itself, but as the train is more ready than before, I have more free time to create a train shader and play with this topic. But at the same time, I should fix and add a lot of things to train too. So tell me your idea about all of this stuff. And till the next video, have a good time.